Welcome to Middle Age Can Be Your Best Age, the show designed to help make middle age your prime time of life by defying the notion that once you reach 40, 50, or even 60 years old, your crowning achievements are all behind you. Regardless of whether you're just approaching 40 or are firmly entrenched in your middle years, it's time to launch your very own personal journey toward a joyful and purpose-filled second half of life. Each week, host Roy Richards, an expert on midlife renewal and author of A Midlife Challenge, Wake Up, will discuss the challenges common to middle age and help guide you to a brighter tomorrow. Now, here's Roy. Continuing innovation in Western medicine, new drugs, ever more precise diagnostic tools, improved treatment options, continual research, it would seem positive that future generations in the U.S., will live longer than we do. After all, our great-grandparents were considered old at age 50, and when Social Security was passed into law in the 1930s, the estimated lifespan in the U.S. was around 62, so half of the population wouldn't be around long enough to begin receiving benefits. But here's the disturbing truth. In recent years, the U.S. longevity trend has reversed And as a February 9, 2018 article in Forbes magazine reported that life expectancy in the U.S. actually dropped for the second year in a row to 78.7 years from a high of 79.3 in 2015. And I know that's not a lot, but America is trending very poorly relative to other developed nations. In the 1960s, the U.S. had the world's longest life expectancy, But by 2015, we ranked way down in 31st, well behind other developed countries like Japan, Germany, France, and the U.K. And like me, do you routinely donate to charities like the American Cancer Society, American Heart Association, Diabetes Association, and the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society as they aggressively seek cures for our most common fatal diseases? Uh, well, you'd think that we were making progress, but here's even more disturbing. Here's an alert. My guest, uh, Melanie Rio, MD, predicts sadly that our kids and grandkids will not live as long as we do, and she's here to explain why and what you and I as concerned parents can do about it to improve the odds that, that this will not uh, prove the odds that this will not happen to our offspring. And Dr. Melanie Rehob, MD, has developed a groundbreaking multifaceted technique to preventing disease and treating illness. She combines traditional Chinese medicine, often referred to as TCM, with the latest leading edge tech testing and technology of modern Western medicine. And after completing her residency in OBGYN, she practiced conventional medicine for four years but grew increasingly frustrated with the cookie-cutter Western medicine, and she subsequently received degrees in TCM and functional integrative medicine and now incorporates all three disciplines into her practice, and she's founder and principal of the Rio Institute of Integrative Medicine in Florida, and she guides folks through preventative care with a holistic integrative approach. And she's author of two books, The Tao of Integrative Medicine and the Answer to Cancer. And she hosts her own podcast, Awakened Wellness with Melanie Riobe, MD. And hello, Dr. Riobe, and welcome to our first program of the new year. Well, thank you so much, Roy. It's wonderful to be here with you. Well, on your website, you cite some very disturbing statistics regarding U.S. health trends. Can you please mention a few of these? Well, yes. Uh, In 2005, the New England Journal of Medicine published a study uh, predicting that that generation of children born at that time would not outlive its parents, and that would be the first time in 200 years, uh, pretty much since statistics have been kept here in the U.S., that we would see such a disturbing reversal of life expectancy. And that was 2005, and I don't think it's gotten any better since then. Unfortunately not. And as you mentioned uh, during your introduction, the Centers for Disease Control has confirmed that that actually has already started to happen. Uh, Life expectancy has dropped for two consecutive years, as you mentioned, and that is the first time in 50 years that we have seen uh, such a trend. And there is nothing that we see on the horizon that is going to reverse it. 
Yeah, I saw one statistic that really disturbed me that you quoted. I think it was by 2025, the rate of Americans getting cancer is expected to rise from the present 33% to 42%. (laughs) That means almost half of us have that to look forward to. Exactly. And our children, uh, by the time our children reach the age of 18, one out of every two of them will have a chronic disease, which is principally responsible for the shortening life expectancy. The good news is that we do have systems of medicine that are not founded here in the United States, but are found abroad that do address these things and can successfully reverse these trends. You know, our task really is to make people aware and to have an understanding of what these systems are and why they work so well so that we can incorporate them and use the best of all worlds to reverse this trend, which is possible if we act now. Yeah, that's, uh, well, let's talk about some of the reasons why the risk from death to cancer, diabetes, and other invasive diseases is so high and trending higher. Uh, in your promotion, you cite the scary fact that there are over 200 killers in our homes. What are some of the toxic uh, in-home conditions and poisons that we should be aware of? Well, number one that hit the news this year were our pesticides and weed killers. You know, there was that um, huge verdict against Roundup um, involving uh, some of the ingredients in their weed killers uh, that are known to cause cancer. Um, The tricky thing about Roundup is it's not the active ingredient, the glyphosate, that causes the cancer. It's the so-called inactive ingredients that actually cause the cancer. They'd be inactive, um, but they're pretty active in causing uh, Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> they're, pretty, they're pretty active in killing people. Um, and so that's the thing is we have to not only concern us, ourselves around the active ingredients, but we have to actually read the rest of the label where the inactive ingredients are, which you is often longer. You better get your reading glasses active. on because they're hard exactly. to read. <laughs> exactly. And if you can't pronounce them, you want to get rid of that particular item. <laughs> So, unfortunately, everything from our shampoos, our detergents, uh, our cleaning products, the lotions that we put on our skin, um, those are the most toxic things that we're seeing. Um, A lot of them have, again, these fillers and inactive ingredients. Sometimes the active ingredients themselves are all artificial, and that's really the main point is Artificial things do not belong in the body. So it kills me when you watch these things. commercials for uh, prescription medicine or other medicines on TV, and they spend half the uh, commercial warning some of the uh, side effects <laughs> that you could suffer from. I guess the lawyers right. make them do that. But uh, <laughs> I have a running joke with my patients. I say the last thing they say is, "If you experience death, call your doctor right away." <laughs> <laughs> Well, you, uh, you mentioned that even a lot of the medicines that we take have some perhaps uh, toxic elements in them then. Yes, and that is the common denominator to all of these substances that are causing cancer and diseases in our children is that they're artificial, and that's really the main thing. Um, yeah. The human body evolved in a natural environment, and uh, it can handle one or two unnatural things. It's designed to do that. You know, in the event that something foreign enters the body, yeah. there are very well-designed mechanisms within the body to, to get rid of them. The problem is we're inundated with them everywhere we turn. You know, we're putting them in our skin. We're ingesting yeah. them. We're taking them as medications. We're putting them on our, our scalps as shampoo and conditioner. Yeah. And these things add up, and it simply is overwhelming uh, the body. And in our unborn children, what is happening is our pregnant uh, moms are not aware of this. They're putting lotions on their skin. They're taking vitamins they think are healthy that have, in fact, artificial ingredients in them. All these things are going right to the baby. Yeah, you tell us babies in the womb today are being exposed even before they're born. And how the heck can that happen? Can you explain briefly uh, how the uh, yeah. uh, child in the womb <laughs> receives those right. toxins. Right. Well, we, ha- we have this idea in our Western thinking and our Western medicine that our skin protects us and that we have these barriers against the environment. Yeah. We're finding out very quickly that that's not true. Whatever is out in the environment finds its way very easily into the human body. The skin is not the barrier that we think it is. It's very porous. It allows pretty much anything to access. Um, so what happens is, we used to think the placenta was a barrier, a protective yeah. barrier for the baby. It's not. It's designed to actually feed the baby. Yeah. 
Yeah. And to make sure that the baby has blood and oxygen and all the nutrition that it needs to properly grow. So if toxins happen to be in that mix, it's going to shove them right in with the food. It doesn't have a means of distinguishing what's a toxin from what's a food product. And so there are very well done experiments now that show us clearly that our babies are being exposed to 180 known cancer-causing toxins before they're ever born. Wow. And when they're born, they're undeveloped. You know, they're tiny, their livers yeah. are not developed, their gastrointestinal yeah. systems are not developed, their nervous system is not developed. These toxins, once they take hold, the baby has no real defense. And so it's very difficult for the baby to remove the toxins. So they just sit there and they cause trouble. They cause inflammation. Yeah. They weaken their systems. They weaken the immune system. And this is why we're seeing such a, a huge increase in autism and attention deficit disorder. Childhood cancer is up 30%. Um, wow. I think all these said things 200 are years ago, autism wasn't even known or, uh, you know, until no. the Industrial Revolution and all that pollution. <laughs> right. You can't find a reference to autism before the Industrial Revolution. You wow. can't find it. You can go look in any history book you want. You won't find anything that even sounds close to autism occurring at the level that it is right now. And you talk about uh, these toxins in cells actually uh, block the nutrition that the baby needs from from entering its body even uh, after it's born, I guess. Isn't that a problem? That, uh... Yeah, so, so these toxins, they, they pretty much go all throughout the body, uh, and they tend to collect in fatty systems like the liver and the brain. Um, they make it difficult for the, heart, the gut to absorb, and the gut is already not well developed in a baby, so... Yeah. You have toxins, inflammation, and then you have an underdeveloped gastrointestinal system. Those babies are going to be nutrient depleted, um, and and they're you know they may not look obviously sick, but they're, those are the kids that have colds all the time. Those are the kids that need you know to have uh, um, you know their tonsils removed. Those are the kids that are missing school. We tend to think that's some type of rite of passage for our children that they're supposed to get sick so they build immunity. That's not at all the case. Um, they're <laughs> yeah, just getting sick. You have, to have measles, mumps, and chicken pox when you're young so you won't get them right. as adults. <laughs> no, and that's because we have a weakened immune system is yeah. why we're getting these conditions. And so, um, and then we're giving our children those anti these antibiotics at these early ages, which is weakening the gut and causing more inflammation. Oh, wow. Um, setting them up for more infections. And so we really need to critically look at how we're administering our health care, how we as individuals can assume responsibility for our own health, become aware of what may work better for us, uh, and begin to employ those methods so that we, we are our own best advocates. Because given the chaos right now in the healthcare industry, it's not going to change uh, in time to save a lot of generations coming, yeah, and we have to take that responsibility for ourselves. Yeah, throwing money at the problem isn't really solving that much. I know you point out somewhere that uh, we spend uh, billions and billions on uh, cancer research, and yet our uh, debt, we have 700,000 more cancer deaths more uh, per year than Europe does that uh, yeah. spends a lot less. A lot uh, we less, spend more yeah. than the entire continent of Europe on the on the care, but that, uh, yeah, and that's because we're spending money on diseases, and you cannot outspend diseases. There's no way that any country can outspend disease because disease is ex extremely expensive. Yeah. So we have to begin to shift our focus to prevention. The problem is that our medical system does not address prevention. When we go through our medical education as physicians, we're not taught prevention. We're simply taught to diagnose things as early as possible. We call that prevention instead, which is yeah. obviously not prevention. Uh, and then we work from that paradigm, which is why we've just allowed more and more and more diseases to take hold. So we have to really critically look and say, what is real prevention and how do we get there? Yeah, and yeah. that is looking at other systems, looking inside the body from a completely different perspective. We have to look inside the cells of the body to see what are they deficient in, what is missing, what toxins are in there that we need to remove. Wow. And then we have to systematically repair the cells, make them healthier so that all the cells in the body can work together. Uh, How to do you counsel expectant mothers and parents of newborns? Is there anything that uh, a lady can do before birth and then infancy to reduce uh, her baby's toxin ingestion before and after Absolutely. the baby's born? 
Yeah, I mean, that's the good news about all of this is there is so much we can do. It's just not talked about. But the first thing you want to do is look at your home. Um, and there's a really great website uh, that the Environmental Working Group has put together. Uh, it's ewg.org. And what they do is they have kind of looked at various household cleaning products, lotions, you know, all types of materials that may be found in the home, and they've graded them uh, so that you can know what's safe and unsafe. And so what I recommend that people do, one of the very first things, is to clean house. Yeah. to look at all of your cleaning products and to find cleaner alternatives that you can bring into the home. Um, you know, air it out, get HEPA filters on your air conditioner systems to filter out the air, replace those when they're due to be replaced, um, get cleaner uh, detergents, laundry detergents, get things that are more eco-friendly, get rid of the plastics, use glass, um, you know, cleaning products, make sure that you look them up uh, so that you're aware of what the ingredients are. The fewer artificial ingredients in your home, the better. Same thing with vitamins. People uh, have this assumption that, well, I'm taking a vitamin, so it must be healthy. Um, there was a study back in 2011 that, that made national news where um, it was thought that uh, vitamin E was causing prostate cancer in men. And when I went back and looked at this study, I went and looked at the structure, uh, the chemical structure of the vitamin E that was actually studied. And in mm -hmm. fact, it was not even vitamin E. It was an artificial version of vitamin E. Um, and so that, again, was the problem. Whenever you hear something causes cancer, you can almost always assume it's artificial. Yeah. Uh, and so... We know based on decades of research that vitamin E, real vitamin E, does not cause prostate cancer. In fact, it, it prevents cancer. Mm -hmm. And so people don't know that. They did not say that in 2011 when the study came out. They just simply said vitamin E causes prostate cancer. Um, and, and the consumers, there's no way to know because when you look on the label, it says vitamin E. You would literally have to call the manufacturer and ask them to send you the product guide so you can see the structure mm -hmm. and compare it to actual vitamin E and see if it's the same thing. So you have to be a little bit cautious, and that's where having the guidance of a board-certified integrative medical doctor is helpful because we know how to sort through that mess and to find the right supplements for individuals. We also know how to test and measure what your actual needs are so that you're not guessing at what your needs are. We know how to guide people systematically to clean their homes and make sure that, you know, the toxic ingredients have been cleared out. But that's the best thing for an expectant mom to do is to go to the Environmental Working Group site or, or a similar site and just really look at the products and, and, you know, eliminate all of the toxic products from your home. And then anything that's going to be on your baby's skin, your baby's going to ingest, do the same thing for that. And then for the mom, if she has the time, if, it, if, if she has about three to six months before uh, she desires to get pregnant, she can be evaluated uh, oh. and she can see what she's being exposed to based on testing. She can be evaluated for any nutrient deficits that she may have so that she can be on the proper supplements. Um, during her pregnancy, a lot of the prenatal vitamins that are recommended are insufficient for a mom's actual needs. They're well below uh, what our new standards are. Uh, you know, new nutrition standards tell us that we need much more uh, vitamin support than what the government recommended daily allowances are. And so having a personalized approach is probably the best way to help yeah. prevent conditions like Alzheimer's, I'm sorry, autism. Yeah. and cancer in, in children, uh, it, it goes a long way towards reducing the risk. Yeah, where where would a, a pregnant lady go to uh, get that integrative evaluation? I, I know she could go to your institute in Florida, but uh, is there any way to find somebody in her local geographic area that uh, would do that kind of thing, not just a family physician? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, well, in 2014, the American Board of Physician Specialties actually formally recognized the field of integrative medicine oh, wow. for the first time. That's cool. And so... Yeah, it's, it's a fantastic development. Um, so just like a cardiologist can get board certified, a neurologist, integrative physicians can also be board certified. And so I obtained my board certification back in 2017. And so you can call the American Board of Integrative Medicine and ask them to refer you to 
uh, a board certified integrative medical doctor in your area. Oh. Um, and there's a lot that can be done remotely as well. You know, so if you don't happen to have one locally, you can consult with one over the phone, you know, yeah. to, to a lot of these tests are actually done in the home. You don't have to necessarily uh, go anywhere uh, you, to have them done. That's great. You also inform us that kids are getting diseases at age 7 and 8 that folks used to get in their 50s and 60s. We have, yeah. Let's say we have some small children at home or even teenagers. What would you uh, recommend to help ensure that this doesn't happen to our kids and grandkids? Uh, what nutrients do our kids need to survive and thrive? Mm-hmm. Well, there are many, many nutrients that the body uses. So there are, you know, 40 to 50 different nutrients. Um, so the best thing to do really is, again, to get the toxins out of the home. That's number one. Number two, the Environmental Working Group also has foods that they have analyzed for pesticide residue and toxicity. So looking at those lists and making sure that anything that's on the toxic list, you buy organic. Yeah. Um, and then they have a list of safe foods where you don't necessarily have to buy them organic for them to be safe. So making sure your teen or your child is eating safe food is another critically important thing. And then making sure that their diet is, is varied with a, a large number of uh, vegetables because vegetables have a very dense number of nutrients in them. Um, so for clean food sources, making sure that you have a large variety of different vegetables and also some fruits uh, in the diet and some good clean protein. So proteins are tricky uh, because they're highly processed. So yeah. you want to make sure that your meats are organic, grass-fed, grass-finished, uh, uh, pasture-raised. Um, you know, these are all things. And wild-caught fish are very important oh. Um, you know, to make sure that the food is clean. So that's the first thing is just to make sure. If your child is experiencing any gastrointestinal symptoms, if they have bloating or heartburn or or stomach pain or if their bowel movements are irregular, that means that their their bowels are not working properly. And, again, uh, you can get tested for that to to determine what, in fact, is wrong with the gut. You know, a lot of kids have infections in their gut that we're not aware of. They have malabsorption and other issues going on, so it's important to treat those because if you have a uh, if you're not absorbing properly, it doesn't matter what healthy food you put in the body if it doesn't get in. Uh, so if a child or a teen has any symptoms whatsoever of gastrointestinal disturbances, again, getting into a board certified integrative medical doctor who can properly test for that is very critical. And then just, again, making sure the house is clean, as clean as possible in terms of toxin burden and making sure the food sources are as clean as possible. Yeah. But kids need all kinds of vitamins and minerals. I mean, yeah. from A through zinc, they need antioxidants, um, minerals, all these things are critical for our kids. And if we just get them on the right food sources and make sure the gut is working and don't burden them with too many toxins, that goes a long way to prevent yeah. Well, let's minimal. talk a bit about the benefits of your integrative approach to prevention and healing as contrasted with conventional medicine. How does an integrative checkup at your clinic in Florida, for instance, differ from a conventional annual checkup with your family physician where he comes in for five minutes and <laughs> listens to yeah. your heart and <laughs> a few right. other good things? Now, what is yeah. this uh, integrative approach, really, that... Uh, well, what it is is it's looking at things from a completely different angle. So I give people the example of when you stand on the earth and you look out on the horizon, it looks kind of flat because our yeah. eyes are not uh, uh, attuned enough to see the curve. Yeah. But, and so we thought, we thought the earth was flat for quite some time because we were looking at this particular perspective. I liken that to our, our current conventional medical model where we're looking at things on the surface. We're not looking deeply down. We're not trying to find out the why of anything. Yeah. And so we're waiting for diseases to take hold. Then we diagnose them once they're there. And then we mask the symptoms uh, with, with uh, artificial drugs or we yeah, do surgery. You treat the symptoms instead of the real cause. Right. <laughs> Integrative medicine is as though you were able to rise above the Earth's surface, and now you can clearly see that it's round. Just yeah. because you changed your angle. I like so you're looking the way at you the call it thing. concierge medicine for you. In yeah. other words, you're looking right. at the total picture of you rather than total just picture. 
Exactly. Now you can see the whole Earth. You're not just seeing the horizon and it looks flat. You're seeing the entire planet. And now you can see all the details that were not revealed to you when you were just looking on the surface. Yeah. That's integrative medicine. And the way that we do that is we have a whole slew of tests that conventional doctors do not do, they're not trained to do, and they don't even believe in, yeah. um, that we can look very deeply inside the body's cells, which is where it functions from in the first place. So yeah. your body functions from its 50 trillion to 70 trillion cells that are operating and making energy for you and exchanging that energy for whatever function they're supposed to do. If it's an eye cell, it's giving you vision. If it's a heart cell, it's pumping blood. If it's a liver cell, it's detoxing your, your, your body. So every cell has a function. And you want to look inside those cells to see if there are any abnormalities that you want to correct. Uh, and that's how you continue to allow the body to function properly. So that's what we do. We use Chinese medicine because Chinese medicine has a very, very broad holistic perspective, and you can really see with great detail what systems are not functioning properly in Chinese medicine. That then allows you to pick the right test. So you're not chasing symptoms in integrative medicine. You're, you're roping them in because all symptoms are connected because the body is one connected whole. So in Chinese medicine, there are patterns formed by symptoms that tell us what systems are involved and how they're involved and how to fix them. Uh, so it gives you the entire picture. Yeah. And then you can use testing to really hone in on what you found so that you have much greater detail so you can provide that individual with very personalized uh, information about them and not just doing a, a cookie cutter thing. So if someone comes in with fatigue, there are 10, 10, 15 different causes of fatigue. You can't yeah. treat fatigue the same way in everyone. So you get to know which of those 15 causes, you know, is at work causing that individual yeah. to have fatigue, and you get to correct them. And then that person has better energy, and they're preventing diseases at the same time. Well, I'm certain a number of our listeners would uh, like to consider, especially in the cold winter months, going down to Florida to receive treatment yeah. at your uh, Rio Institute uh, uh, how do they get in touch with you and find out more about, uh, you know, the treatment options and maybe set up an appointment or whatever? Sure, yeah, we do phone consults as well. So you can give the office a call at area code 561-244-5880, or you can visit www.reobe, R-I-O, B as in boy, E as in Edward, integrativemedicine.com. You can send us an email through our website as well. We'll be happy to... That's great. Give you more information. Well, tell you have two books out, uh, The Tao of Integrative Medicine and The Answer to Cancer. Uh, how yes. does somebody uh, review those or uh, preview those or maybe purchase them? Where's, where's the best place to go to uh, get a hold of those? Right on our website. We have both books available through our website at reobeintegrativemedicine.com. What are a few of the answers to cancer that you... <laughs> Well, you know, it, whatever, whatever condition you're talking about, it goes back to the same point. It goes back to making sure you get rid of toxins, making sure you strengthen your body to be able to remove toxins, making sure your food sources are clean, making sure you do the right test and target your supplements based on what your deficiencies are. Yeah. Um, and then there are, there are really advanced cancer tests that we can do in integrative medicine that, again, are not recognized in the conventional community, where we can tell if you have cancer five to ten years before the mammogram will show it oh, wow. uh, or the CAT scan will show it. You know, these tests are kind of out of Europe. Um, they're not really found here. Uh, but they've been shown again and again to diagnose cancers up to a decade before any particular diagnostic tool we have currently available here in the U.S. So there's so much available to people, uh, and it's simply just trying to get the information out that's key. It's already there. There's really nothing that we have to reinvent or discover. It's all there. Well, where should listeners go to catch your podcast, Awaken Wellness with Melanie Rio, MD? Where, how do they find that? We're on Dream Visions 7 Radio, and the 7 is the number 7, um, dreamvisionsradio.com. And we're on live uh, every first and third Tuesday at 11 a.m., and all of our pre-recorded shows are on the opposing Thursdays at 11 a.m. I'm sorry, Tuesdays at 11 a.m. and also at 11 p.m. 
Oh, I see. Well, that's great. Then uh, you might want to catch one of those uh, broadcasts, I'm sure. But uh, well, in conclusion, yeah. as my guest, Dr. Melanie uh, Rhea, just described, the toxic environment in today's America is poisoning both our bodies, our children's bodies, and our emotional well-being. And frighteningly, our babies are being exposed to 180 cancer-causing toxins even before they are born, not to mention once they are born and our undeveloped babies, all the toxins that they're exposed to. And should present predictions hold in a few years, 42% of all Americans will be diagnosed with some form of cancer in their lifetimes, and our children's estimated lifespan will be significantly lower than ours is today. And the response of conventional Western medicine is early diagnosis and then radical treatment through uh, chemotherapy or radiation, and as I like that, Dr. Rio puts it on a video that I listened to from her website, treating cancer with chemo and radiation is like dropping an atomic bomb to kill an ant. <laughs> and sadly, <laughs> once your cancer is treated by these methods, you ha- actually have increased your chances that uh, cancer will return. But the good news is we can lessen the threat to our children and to ourselves by ridding our bodies, our homes, and our medicine cabinets of all those cancer-causing toxins and things we always thought were safe could be slowly poisoning our kids. And so we get most, uh, we need to get rid of most of them. And also we need to consider Dr. Riob's unique multifaceted integrative approach to medicine, a preventive approach to cure that includes in-home therapies, personal nutrition plans, weight loss programs, and so much more for the entire family. And to get started, I I urge you to go to Dr. Melanie Riobe's website and give us that website address once more. Yes, it's uh, RiobeIntegrativeMedicine.com, and Riobe is spelled R-I-O-B as in boy, E as in Edward. Okay, that's great. Riobe, uh, Riobe. RiobeIntegrativeMedicine.com, I can't even say it. And better health to you and your offspring. That would be a great start to the new year, wouldn't it? And thanks to me and Dr. Riobe for uh, being here today. A most healthy and prosperous new year to you as you treat and educate folks on integrative medicine. Thank you, Roy, and uh, happy holidays and a wonderful new year to you as well. Many blessings. Thank you so much for having me. Well, that was a pretty scary segment, wasn't it? But it's information we needed to hear. Dr. Melanie Riab uh, tells it like it is. Hard to believe, uh, but true, unfortunately, that unhealthy toxins are finding their way into our newborn babies while they are still in the womb. And they continue to uh, negatively impact our bodies and our minds uh, throughout our life until we die. And here's a a worthy project for the new year, though. Let's all launch a spirited campaign to rid the food we eat and and our children eat and our homes of unhealthy toxins. It's doubtful that we can remove all of them, but we can make a good start. And with all their potential for living, we certainly don't want our kids to die at a younger age than we do. In closing, let me remind you that if you're concerned about healthy eating, we've recorded several prior programs on that subject on how to improve your eating habits and turn your body, uh, treat your body like a temple and keep the toxins out. And most recently on our December 17th, 2018 program, our title was Crush Your Cravings Then Eat What You Want. And believe me, once you... Uh, listen to this program and follow the recommendations, you will want to eat only what's good for you, and you want to, want to gouge on all those things with uh, toxins in them and uh, processed foods and all that stuff you don't need to be eating. And remember, when you, uh, you can go back and listen to any of our prior programs at your convenience. They're all there for the taking. Simply click on the prior episodes tab, And you can go back as far as you want to uh, find a a title for a program that's attractive to you and check it out. And as this is the first show of our new year, I want to wish you and your family a most happy and prosperous 2019. Enjoy it while it's here. 
because with the right mental attitude and a positive outlook on the future, middle age, and for that age, any uh, that matter, any age can be your best age. And to all our listeners out there, Happy New Year, and I trust you'll be with us throughout 2019 as we explore reasons why middle age can be your best age. Goodbye for now. You've been listening to Middle Age Can Be Your Best Age, hosted by Roy Richards, an expert on midlife renewal and author of both A Midlife Challenge, Wake Up, and Wake Up, Captain and Crew, Restart Your Engines. You can learn more about Roy and his Middle Age Renewal Training System by visiting his website, middleagerenewal.com.